I once heard of a soccer player named John. He was selected to play for the first team uh, for the first time and was deeply excited and he was proud at the achievement of what he got to and where he got to in sport. And he shared this good news with his friends and his family and in fact anyone who would listen. On the way to the game, the bus got stuck and they arrived so late that they had to change into their kit on the bus and just run straight out onto the pitch. As they got changed, the captain of the team realised he'd forgotten his soccer boots and therefore he couldn't play. John, without hesitating, said, you're the same size boot as me, here, have mine. And he gave his boots to the captain, which meant he couldn't play. At half time, the captain, he, he didn't do a team talk. He didn't get the team in a huddle to go through the game. He just turned to John and said, John, we all know how much you've been looking forward to playing today. Why did you give me your boots? Again, on the bus, on the way home, the captain sat next to him and again wanted to know what was behind John's deep act of kindness. John quietly and simply was able to point him to the love he had in Jesus that had prompted him to love the captain in that way. That one small act changed the eternity of that soccer captain. See, sports people who leave a deep mark for Christ in their club usually are those most devoted to those that they compete with. Let me ask you a question then. Do you have authentic or superficial friendships with sports people at your club or team? And how do you know? In order to be a good witness of Jesus Christ to our sports friends, we, we need to invest time in them, learn what they like, learn about them, have shared experiences with them, love them genuinely. Our friends need to trust us if we are to expect them to explore questions of faith with us. In order to build this trust, alongside spending time with people, we, we need to be authentic in how we live our lives. So what does, what does this look like? Well, to help us, we're going to look at the Apostle Paul and how he shared life with a small group of people in a place called Thessalonica. Now, Paul, well, he wasn't with them very long. In fact, in Acts chapter 17, it seems to suggest he was only there around about three weeks before persecution drove him away and he had to leave. Yet, in that time, he was able to forge genuine relationships. And we get a kind of window into what these relationships were like from his first letter to them, specifically in chapter 2. You see, at the beginning of the letter, Paul was praying for them and he is absolutely thrilled that they are continuing to grow as a small church, even though they're facing intense persecution. In fact, their faith is so evident, they become known for it right across the whole region. In the second chapter, in defence of his ministry amongst them, Paul describes what he was like when he was with them. And he, he uses the familiar analogy of parents to describe what he was like and why. Well, firstly, in, in verse 7, he says that when he was with them, he was like a nursing mother as he cared for them, that he loved them so much as a mother loves a newborn child. And that means he, he put their needs above his own, that he actively sought to meet their needs, to serve them and to love them deeply. Caring about the things that concern them, always there for them. And secondly, a little later in verse 11, he says he was like a loving father with them as he encouraged, comforted and urged them forward towards God. Not only did he care for them, but he built them up through encouragement. He was there for them when they needed comfort and he desired the best for them and so urged them towards a full life in God. Now, Paul used this analogy of parents to help us grasp what re deep relationships look like. It is clear that Paul loved the Thessalonians. Hey, look, I wonder 
if your sp- sports friends were to describe you in your club, what would be the differences between what they say and what we see in Paul? What do you think this is? Paul summarises his behaviour among the Thessalonians beautifully. He says this in verse 8, Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Hey, look, isn't that an amazing statement? Isn't that the life of a Christian in a sports club? Someone who delights to share not only the gospel, the good news of Jesus, but their lives as well. Hey, look, at times we can be in danger of seeing sports people as projects. Our passion for them to know the truth about Jesus, driving us to speak boldly in what we say, but perhaps not reflect the love of Christ in how we share life with them. Disinterested in them beyond their willingness to engage with the gospel. I wonder if your sport friends would say that of you. But equally, we can share life and love our sports friends deeply, serving them as a parent, but then not having the courage to share with them the greatest news in the world, that of Jesus, that they so desperately need to hear. So do you see how Paul does both? In fact, when you see his heart for them, you see his commitment to praying for them, knowing it's God who is their father, and his willingness to share his own life with them as he cares for them and communicates God's truth. He prayerfully shared the gospel with love and commitment. Hey, look, imagine your sports friend describing you like that. She prayerfully shared the gospel with me with love and commitment. Paul's actions were a natural outworking of his heart attitude, his personal relationship with the Father, and the love he received through the Son reflected through him to the Thessalonians. This meant he shared life and the gospel. Remember John and his football boots, his soccer boots at the beginning uh, of this talk. How can you grow a deep love for your sports friends that overflows into your actions? Well, prayerfully share the gospel with love and commitment. Point them to Jesus through what you say and how you live, genuinely caring for them so that as they see you, they see your actions that resound in love and commitment and they see your words that speak truth about Jesus. Wouldn't it be great for your sports friends to have the opportunity to grow in a relationship with God himself as they see it lived out in you?